Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back here to my channel where I play Plant Soup. My name is Nisa and today we are building for the Dharma Gazelle. So, do you want to see how I built this or learn more about the Dharma Gazelle and how people in the real world work to actually save them? Then please keep watching. But before I get too deep into that, I actually want to talk with you about this habitat because I got a brilliant idea or at least i think so myself please you are allowed to be the judge down in the comments today um but we always build these quarantines because we have to but we don't actually build anything that would pass as a quarantine since uh yeah you still need to like be aware of the animals and even after quarantines there is uh, measures to be taken before you just release a animal out to the zoo so here the idea is that we are lucky enough to get a flock of 20 dama gazelles and they have been in quarantine for a while actually they are ready to leave the quarantine uh, and th that's actually why i built this in this specific way as you can see here it is one big habitat but it is built as multiple so first of all this room on the left would be the quarantine area where they will be initially uh, where you lock them in everything will be like metal and concrete no organic matter at all uh, so nothing can carry diseases in there and you can have them in there safe and out of the way from everything that could be uh, contaminated if any of these should show to be sick then when they are able to move a little more around you can take them out here on the back sides where there will be a habitat uh, or a not a habitat but just they can get outside still we put nothing out there only sand and dirt uh, no foliage no anything in case there should be anything that we missed in the quarantine phase then later on we are ready to let them out in a habitat and get them used to being around or benefactors that visit this future life project so at this point they can literally just go in and open up the uh, what's it called the corridor between these two uh, enclosures and then let them run through so they will still have the back area where they can get in and go, be in peace and just be themselves and then they can go up here front where they guest where there will be more noise and get used to that slowly in their own time this is of course not a long term habitat but a midway point before they would get their own big habitat therefore also this habitat will not be built specifically for dharma gazelles but in a manner where multiple animals could use it so it will have for instance a little more foliage than they normally would have uh, in front and again there will be nothing in the back so the game will be fine with it um, but we just have these different measures to take to make sure that they can have this peaceful uh, introduction to zoo life again some animals will come from other zoos some animals will be from private people some animals will actually come from the wild to be able to be a part of this so again uh, the future life project will be a multitude of multiple instances for instance they will also help animals in the wild that have gotten hurt in some way aren't able to take care of themselves or just need help and uh, vets and feeding until they will be able to be re-released to the wild future life is as always about bringing animals home to where they belong and that will not be in a zoo and it will not be here in a future life project this would only be a midway point or a place where the animals can get peace and quiet live out their natural life and hopefully breed some offspring then uh, that then would be released to the wild. The Dama Gazelle is of course a bovine and belongs in the subfamily on and of antelopes called Antilopinae. And the antelope subfamily is of course filled with 27 different species, extant and extinct, uh, which is both antelope, gazelle, buck, uh, clip springer 
everything that reminds you of an antelope or a gazelle or anything adjacent to that uh, will belong in this subfamily. The Dama gazelle is one of three species carrying in the genus, which again is the first name in their Latin name, being Nanger. Nangers are these pretty big gazelles, to be honest. That is the giant gazelle, Dama gazelle, and summer rings gazelle. And that, of course, make the full name of the Dama gazelle, the Nanger Dama. They live in Africa, but more specifically Chad, Mali, Niger, Algeria and Morocco. So they don't live a lot of places and that's also one of the reasons why their numbers are so low. They have a number under 500, so it's not the worst we ever talked about here on my channel. But it is definitely a number where you kind of need to start doing something and this is also why they are currently listed as critical endangered according to the IUCN red list. Today I found a, a, a article of a website called RCSS Conservation and it seems to be a non-profit working well round and for helping animals just like a lot of the other um, animal protection programs and benefactors and all of these things we have talked about before. Sorry, I'm missing the specific word of what's it called, uh, but it's like we have talked with the, the crocodilian ones we have talked about. We have talked about WWF. We have talked about Canadian Conservancy uh, and many, many more of these. So it's another one and if you actually want to help you can either go and become a member or donate or buy from their web shop it is of course the article is linked below so you can go and donate and find it there i, I will just say no pressure you do not have to if you don't have the money or you simply don't want to it's your decision i'm not the one to decide here it's all up to you i just want to tell you that it is a opportunity if you sit afterwards with feelings about that you actually maybe wanted to help I will say though, you will see some things here that will conflict with what we just talked about. Uh, my normal uh, information comes from uh, Animalia, that's also linked below. So I will try to classify which website co it comes from. And when they conflict, I will mention both. Just to clarify that uh, I can find information for both. Uh, and again, for instance, According to RCC, C, sorry, RCSS website, there's few, fewer than 250 individuals remaining. Uh, this doesn't exactly conflict since uh, Animalia states few, fewer than 500 and 250 is still fewer than 500. But there's also other things like they state that they live in the arid grasslands of North Africa, Sahel. Um, and according to Animalia, they live in all of the, uh, both in North and Sub Sahara Africa. Uh, and not only in grasslands, but also savanna and scrubland in the both arid and tropical climate zones. So, again, there's a little conflict here. However, I don't read too much into it. It is possible that one information just is older than the other and maybe they have gone instinct in some of these places since Animalia got their information or other factors, of course. However, according to the uh, article, they live ac uh, across just five or six fragmented populations in the wild at this point and they have marked it on a map again link below if you want to see the map uh, where they mark that that is in Niger and Chad that is fairly close to each other they share borders but then in UA which I don't think I ever heard about UA before but it's this uh, very small small uh, country and between them 
and Niger and Chad. There is two countries being Saudi Arabia and Sudan and a giant lake in between. The article uh, continues and goes into something that I never heard about before. But then again, I never heard about the Dharma Gazelle before. But it has uh, apparently been debated for quite some time whether there is three subspecies of Dharma Gazelle. And it's clear to see that if there is three subspecies, then it's not the just the Dharma Gazelle did f with fewer of 250 individuals but it is three subspecies with even less. Historically, we have treated them as separate subspecies and zoos, and therefore we have kept them apart, and this zoo only breeds for this subspecies, and that zoo only breeds for that subspecies, which makes it very difficult to find new blood when you have such a few numbers. However, genetic testing has shown that the difference between these subspecies are so small and in most species you would need much more difference to actually classify animals as a subspecies. For instance, there's northern lion in uh, North Africa and in India. However, they are still northern lions even though there is a tiny difference in appearance but because their genetics is pretty close to the same it's still same subspecies it's kind of the same thing we talk about here where genetically they aren't really that far apart so maybe for to save the overall species of the domicil it would make much more sense to just start crossbreeding these uh, subspecies that you then would lose of course but perhaps this is what it needs to be able to uh, save the overall picture again it's a tough decision to make because again we want all of the subspecies to survive and thrive but if that is not a possibility you shouldn't wait too long to go the other route if that's the only possible uh, way of saving the damagasol in some of these smaller flocks of damagasiles in the wild, the genetic uh, diversity is already so extremely low, so the offspring will suffer because of them. So currently, the RCSS wild genes in Colorado collaboration with their partners are working to determine if this is the same for the rest of the flocks or if it's hopefully only for these flux that's already been tested. And they are also going to do the same for captivated populations to see if there may be some genes there that can be used or if all of the animals currently in captivation already would be in breeds if we try to even take them from different zoos. And then they write, we are currently working hard to develop genomic techniques that will be invaluable for monitoring this critical endangered species in the wild. Besides that, they are of course also doing other works. For instance, they did host a workshop in 2013 with the IUCN Antelope Specialist Group, which led to the first conservation review. Um, and more recently, they contributed to the Dama Gazelle Conservation Strategy 2019 to 2020. Aid, which is strategy specific focused on how to help the damagasil. I have looked at this um, strategy and I will actually at least read some of it at a time, not on here because it is 63 pages long, uh, but it goes into a few different it, uh, things. Uh, chapter one is introduction, of course, of the damagasil uh, and why we need to help it and such. Then uh, in chapter two, it's the current status of it, uh, and it specifies populations in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, 
Ja, Libya, Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Niger, Chad, Sudan, Connectivity. Um, these different places where they may be found. And then they have a chapter that just a review of pro progress 2014 to 2018. Then we have a chapter of assessment of conservation options. Re uh, chapter five is research, research needs. So specifically, where do we need to learn more? And chapter six is uh, object, sorry, object, objectives and actions for Dharma Gazelle conservation 2019 to 2028. Uh, then they have some ta tables and figures and something like that in the end. So it's really, really well documented and there's a lot to go into. Again, it seems very, very interesting. It's something kind of like this that we went through some of for the Somali wild ass the other day, I think it was. Uh, so again, I would be intrigued to read it more here and I kind of need to save where these are from. Uh, this is, however, with a lot of work, help for a lot of more than the Somali Wild Ass got help for. And a lot of these, um, I do not know. There's Marvel Wildlife, TWCS, Tunisia Wildlife Conservation Center, Conservation Centers for Species Survival. Jordan to logic the rabbit. No, is CSIC, CMS, and um, some that are written on with uh, letters I do not know. So there's a lot of people who work really hard to figure out what is the best things to do in the future for the Damascus. So I wouldn't worry in the sense that, yes, they still may die out, but if anyone can help it, it is definitely these people and they will do anything they can to make sure it happens. Again, some things are out of our hands. Again, the sun could die out tomorrow and it wouldn't matter either way or we can actually save this species again if you want to help you uh, for yourself you can actually go either and donate or whatever at rcss conservation and again the link for the article will be linked below and i will also of course link this strategy if you want to read it yourself because it's it will take some time, but it seems very, very good. But for now, guys, please enjoy the cinematics and I will come back afterwards.
Okay guys, that's all I got for you today. As always, you know the drill. Like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you know the next time I upload a video. I really hope to see you again. Either in the comments below or in the next video. Bye guys.